Traditionally, a periton was described as the beautiful combination of a stag and a bird, a creature that used to dwell in the old city of Atlantis before it collapsed deep within the water. In Dungeons & Dragons, though, there is a much, much darker story. Peritons are the combination of an eagle-like bird with the head of a stag. However, its face is often demonic in style and possesses sharp, monstrous teeth. Pay no mistake, this creature is an abomination, created by foul, dark magic. The most bizarre of its features is its shadow. A periton's shadow does not reflect its physical body, but instead it reflects that of a humanoid body a factor that it is believed changes depending on a few activities of the creature. You see, peritons are often the topic of rumors and legends, and there are many myths that try to explain why their shadow is casted in that way. Some scholars believe that they must have been human at some point, being forced into this shape by a powerful curse long ago. Others claim that they must have been the creation of some evil deity forgotten in time. Bards love to tell stories about peritons and their beginnings. A favorite one, for example, is the tale of a jealous wife who found out that her husband had been cheating on her. To regain the love of her husband, she cut out the heart of the mistress, and in a foul ritual used the heart as a component in order to enchant the man and make him love her again. Her villainy, however, was exposed and she was sentenced to death. It is said that the carrion birds who ate from her corpse became the very first peritons. These bards believe that the fascination that peritons have with hearts stem from this legend, a fascination that we will talk about in just a little bit later. Perhaps the most believable legend about how these creatures came to be came from the telling of a cleric of Denier, a lesser god of knowledge. In this legend, it is believed that Peritans actually used to be the race of humans who used to live in what is now Thay. These humans were terrible Bane worshippers, and as punishment for their crimes, they were cursed by the five gods of law. Lathander, god of the dawn, said, You have been swift as an eagle in your flight from justice, so I curse each of you with the body of an eagle. Mistra, the goddess of magic, said, Fierce as a wolf have you been in the persecution of the innocent, so I curse you with the teeth of the wolf. Torm, god of duty, said, Foolish as a stag in rut have you been, as you shunned what is true and good, so I curse you all to bear the head and horns of a stag. Ilmater, god of suffering, said, You have tormented and torn heart and soul from your victims, so I curse you with unnatural appetites, so that you may only live and prosper after devouring the hearts of your prey. And finally, Mialiki, goddess of the forest, said, While you acted as beasts, your heart contained evil which only humans can know. I curse you to always cast the shadow of the humans you once were, to always remind you of the terrible deeds and the souls that you have lost. And thus, they became peritons. But let's go back to that fascination with the heart. What is that all about? You see, every periton strives to consume the perfect heart, which drives them to kill as many humans as they possibly can. They will undoubtedly kill everything they see, and they have the ability to eat a great many things. They are omnivores after all, but they specifically seek human hearts to devour. Some claim this statement untrue, while others simply state that it is impossible for a dwarf or an elf to ever have the perfect heart, as that is why they seek humans. Whichever the case is irrelevant. A periton will cripple you simply to gain the ability to extract your still beating heart and devour it as fast as it can. Survivors claim that in just that very moment, the sublime still moment when the periton is devouring a beating heart, is the only time when his shadow actually shows the true monster that it is. Foolish monstrosities that leave a perpetually unhappy existence filled with pain and misery, driven by an endless desire to kill others and hopefully someday ascend into a higher form of existence by the eating of a perfect heart. They actually believe that, by doing this, they will finally obtain the peace that they truly want. 
If there is ever a truth to this, nobody knows. However, there is some level of magic in the consumption. That much is for certain. Not just in the, in the actual shadow changing, but, but even in the actual reproduction that they go through. You see, a female periton is only ever fertile directly after consuming the heart of a humanoid. A very small time frame lasting no longer than 18 hours after consumption. After which she will lay 1-4 to four eggs at a time. Eggs that are believed to be as hard as metal and that only acid can break. If you ever find a periton out in the wilderness, be extremely careful. The foul magics that created them made them very resistant to mundane weapons. But more importantly, it made them smart. As smart as a human, some would say. At least, smart enough to sometimes incarcerate humanoids and create human farms. The peritons would actually treat these humans as cattle, even going so far as to make sure that they would breed, so as to eventually slaughter them for their hearts. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I apologize for not having a video last week. I, I got really into Player Unknown Battlegrounds um, on Steam, and I just sort of lost myself on that. Um, the plan is to have a Dragon video by by Wednesday, and maybe something else on Friday. I'm let's see if I can keep that up. Um, it's kind of a tough little schedule for myself, but I'm hoping here. Uh, you guys have been wonderful with the support, and, and I truly appreciate it. This this whole D and D twist that I have done with the channel has revitalized my enjoyment of YouTube, and I just couldn't be more happy. Uh, have a great day, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you once again.